Monty, okay. This is it. Back out. This is it. The oh, he's, gonna he's going up here. He's going up here. He's going up here. He's going up here. He's going up Now they're up again. Passes to himself. He gets Flip, it. Reset. Can he do it? He is she. Who is the greatest of all time? It's a question that's been asked for years on end in just about every context that you could think of. And at least for Rocket League players, the answer has usually been pretty straightforward. But recently, with the emergence of Zen and with Atomic's major win, people have started to ask that question a little bit more. About eight months ago, I decided to try and statistically find the greatest player of all time, and it did not go well. But now, I've decided to try again. Over the past few months, I have been collecting data, analyzing spreadsheets, and pushing my sanity to the limit in order to find who is, statistically, the greatest player in Rocket League history. And today, I'm going to tell you who it really is. Like I said before, I've already done this once, and a lot of this video was built off of improving on the mistakes that I made last time, so if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend doing so. Also, if you want to be notified when I upload videos in the future, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. But enough about me, let's get into the video! In order to start on this journey, I need a starting list of players. So, I went through few Liquipedia pages, and I also questioned some of the definitely sane and normal people on Reddit. And after doing that, I got this list of players. You don't need to pause and read it, the whole list is in the description. So whenever you want, you can go down there and read it. Here's what we'll be doing throughout this video. We'll be using several statistics, each with their own individual weight, and ranking the players within them. After that, we give players greatness points based on where they stack up to their peers. Once this is done for all stats, we add up all of the individual scores for each player, and the player with the most total greatness points is, statistically, the greatest Rocket League player of all time. Easy enough, right? So, how do we determine the player's rankings in the stats? Last time I did it based off of a percentile, but after looking back on it, I really don't like that methodology. The percentile scoring was basically a ranking of the percent of people who were worse than any one player in a given stat. It was good enough back then, but now that I actually know what I'm doing, it's kinda trash. Let me explain. Let's say that there are three players under the stat, most spoons. I don't know, just roll with it. Let's say that player one has 500 spoons, player two has 499, and player three has six. If we go off of a percentile-based scoring system, then the point distribution will look a little something like this. You can already see the problem, right? There's no way to give credit to how close two players are or how far. It doesn't capture enough of the nuances or enough of the separation in values, and therefore, it sucks. Here's the system that I'm going to use now. In this system, we take the player stat, subtract the minimum from it, and then divide it by the maximum minus the minimum. To sum it up, we are taking the range of values from before and changing that range to be from 0 to 1 while maintaining the player's relative positions in the stat distribution. So, for that same scenario from before, if we use the new system, the scores will look something like this. Much better than before. Anyways, I've been talking about all these statistics and how important they are, but I haven't actually gone into what any of them are. Some of them are pretty straightforward, like score per game, while some others, like peak performance, are a little bit weirder. So I'll be explaining what every stat is as we go through it. Another few quick notes before we get into this. Firstly, I'd like to state that I manually entered all of the information used during this video, so if I mistyped a number or copy-pasted the wrong thing, then it'll mess up the scores and that's completely on me. Also, all this information is as of the end of the London Major, which was June 23rd, so at this point, it's pretty outdated. And last thing, I swear, if you haven't already, consider leaving a like, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I've made a few other videos about Rocket League, including an abridged history lesson for any new fans who are watching, so if you have the time, make sure to check it out. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below about your personal top 10, so you can check back later and see if you were right. And now that's out of the way, let's get to the fun part! The first step that I used was fairly simple, games played. It's probably the most basic measure of longevity that you could find. And the leader here comes as no surprise to anyone, it's Garrett G, with just over 3,000 games played. He will receive the maximum score here, which is 5 points, with JNaps in second receiving 4.36 points, and Torsos in third with 4.35 points. 
And just for clarification, the 10 players that you see here are not the only ones who are getting points. As long as you are not dead last, you get points in this category. I'm just showing the top 10 because it makes my life a whole lot easier. The next stat that I used is also pretty simple, overall win percentage. And here, just like last year, the Middle East absolutely dominates, with all three members of the Falcons occupying the top spots. But why does it say adjusted over there? Well, I don't think it's a secret at this point that some regions are easier to compete in than others. It's a lot easier to do well when the competition is easier. Good players in bad regions get seen as greater than they are, and any player from a good region could easily boost their stats just by competing in a weaker region. So, I'm applying a regional constant as a way to counteract that. NA and EU have a constant of 1, Mina and Sam are 0.92, OCE is 0.75, and APAC and SSA are 0.65. I'm not going to be using this for every stat, as indicated by games played not having an adjusted score. Just the ones where it kind of makes sense. From now on, I'll indicate when I'm using this by putting this symbol next to the stat name. Okay, moving on. Next up is score per game, where first killer lands at number 1. In second is Monkey Moon, with Archie in third, and in fourth is Nupo, who would have been in second without the regional constant being applied. After that, we move on to total LAN appearances, and here, I used the regional constant for only the non-RLCS LAN, because the people over in OCE seem to have a lot of OCE-only LANs, and that caused a whole lot of shenanigans down the line. After adjustment, JNaps is in first with 25 total LAN appearances. In second is Torsos with his adjusted and rounded up total of 24, and in third is Garrett G with 22. Coming up next is physical play, which will be determined by a mixture of demos inflicted, demos taken, and overall win percentage. And in first place, I mean, come on. We all knew it was going to be calm. You knew it, I knew it, everyone knew it. So let's just move on. Next up is movement and boost management, which shows who goes the fastest while best managing their boost usage and collection. And with this stat, the best by a landslide is Nupo. He was the only player on this list to average over 1700 speed throughout their entire career. In second was Alpha 54, and in a close third place was First Killer. Next up is Clutch Factor. Now, since there wasn't any Game 5 or Game 7 data that I could find on Shift, I had to stick with what they had. Overtime games. This stat takes a mix from overtime games played, overtime win percentage, and the percent difference in score from normal games to overtime games. And at the top of the list, we have Gimmick as number one, with a 55% win rate in overtime and a boost in game score of more than 80 points. In second place is his former teammate Squishy, and preventing the Cloud9 podium sweep, an unexpected appearance from Classux in third. Next up is 1v1 Prowess, and for this I took a player's peak MMR in ones and a few other stats from RL Duels. And in first place is Daniel, who, while not having the highest MMR, has the highest RL Duels rating on the entire list by far. In a close second is First Killer, and in third is Rawas. Next up is probably the second most complicated stat out of all of them, Peak Performance. Using a method that I'll explain later, each player was assigned a peak era where their competitive results were the best. Their goals, assists, saves, and score per game will be compared to the averages from their respective peak eras, and the percent difference of all of them will be taken. This stat is more or less asking, how much better were you than everyone else at your peak? And in a clear and convincing first place is Archie during RLCS X. He and Monkey Moon in second were the only two players to average more than two saves during their peak, and sitting in a very distant third was First Killer. And with that, we have officially reached the 50 point mark, which means that we are now halfway through the points. Yes, you heard me right. Halfway. Now, you might be wondering, hey Crump, I know you're totally awesome and cool and you're definitely way better than all the other Diamond 2s, but what could the other 50 points be coming from? And the answer is pretty simple. There's one thing that I haven't mentioned yet. One thing that I haven't even started to unpack. It's nice that First Killer has the highest average score and that Garrett G has played the most games, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is whether or not they won anything. I combed through every player's tournament results for hours, from top to bottom, and the end result is the final, most important stat of them all. The entirety of the 50 points that have yet to be scored will be accounted for by the player's competitive results. 
Now, this is by far the most complicated thing that I've done so far, so I won't bore you with every single detail. Here's the simplified version. After dividing every single tournament that has ever been played into different categories, I assign significant values, or SVs, to every single one of those categories to show how important they are. After that, we get a player's competitive results, courtesy of Liquipedia, and we extract the SV, the time since the tournament ended, and the player's placement for each tournament that they've ever played. We shove all of that into this really big and stupid equation and apply the regional constants where needed, and the end result is that player's tournament result score, or TRS. The sum of all of a player's TRSs will be weighed on a 25-point scale. All the tournaments within each era are also summed up, and the highest era result score of each player, or ERS for short, will be weighed against other players who share the same peak era on a 22-point scale. This is also the method that I use to get the peak era of the peak performance stat. And the player's best individual tournament result, or ITR for short, will be weighed against all others on a three-point scale. So again, just to summarize, we're trying to show which players were the best throughout their entire career, which players had the most dominant peaks, and which players had the best singular result. Get it? Great, then let's get into it! In 20th for TRS sum is Metanaris, followed by TRK, Cookser, Chaussette, First Killer, Gimmick, Torsos, Atomic, Fairy Peak, and Alpha 54 at number 11. This portion was mainly meant to express consistency over a long period of time, so it isn't too surprising to see some older players up here. I'm kinda shocked to see Torsos so far up, but he's been playing for a really long time. At 10 is Monkey Moon, followed by Torment, Chicago, Violent Panda, Justin at 6, Squishy at 5, JNaps at 4, Turbo Pulsa at 3, and well above everybody else is Garrett G in second and Kadop in first. Garrett G and Kadop were both a part of the scene from the very beginning, and they both have been consistently performing, even now, so it's not a surprise to see them up there. If Turbo kept on playing for as long as them, I have no doubt his TRS sum would be bordering on 600 as well. Next up is the ERS stat, and just to clarify, the players are strictly being compared to others among them who peaked at the same era, meaning that the percentiles and scores of players who peaked in the pre-open era are calculated independently of the people who peaked during RLCS. X and 2021 and 2022 etc etc so there will be some cases where a player's era score will be higher than another but they will place lower than them because of the distributions of ERS's within their respective eras for example scrub killers peak era was in the pre-open era and Seiko's was in 2021 to 2022 scrub killers ERS is 166 and Seiko's is about 98 despite that Scrub Killer is earning about 6.1 points from this stat, whereas Seiko will earn 16.72. That is because, relative to his peers, who also peaked in 2021 to 2022, he performed better than Scrub performed against his peers in the open era. With that being said, in 20th is Yan, followed by Garrett G, Violent Panda, Itachi, Vatira, Exotic, Khaled, Zen, Beast Mode, and Ahmad in 11th. Now, for those of you mad that Zen is entire, keep in mind that the guy only played in one split. He certainly was dominant, but he didn't play in nearly enough tournaments to put that on full display. In 10th is Turbo, followed by Raze Bull, Alpha 54, Mark by 8, AJG, and tied for first is Daniel in 2024, Radosin in 2023, Extra in 2022, Monkey Moon in RLCS X, and KDOP in the pre-open era. Extra being first in 2022 was a bit of a shock, along with Radosin being first for 2023, but overall, these results make sense. For the ITR score, it's better to break this down by teams rather than players, because a lot of these results are bunched together. In 10th is Season 1 I Buy Power, in 9th is Season 2 Flipside, in 8th is Devo and Remco from Season 3 Northern Gaming, in 7th is Violent Panda Alone from Season 5 Worlds, and in 6th is Cloud9 in Season 6. 5th place is Season 7 Vitality, followed by Season 8 NRG, 2021-2022 BDS, 2022-2023 Vitality, and in 1st place is G2 in 2024 from the London Major. The function that I use to weigh a tournament based on the time it's been since it happened uses a logarithmic scale, and since all of this data is still as of the London Major, they get the full 60 points for their RTR score. With that, we've finally gone through each and every one of the stats. And I don't know about you, but I think I'm ready to see the results.
As was the case with last time, before starting, I made my own top 30 list, so when we see a player pop up, you get to see how far off I was in their placement. Anyways, let's look at some of the more notable players who didn't quite make the top 30. Now, there are certainly lots of other noteworthy players who didn't make the top 30, but I feel like these 11 are the most well-known and the ones who are most often referred to as being in the top 30. But in most of these cases, they weren't even that far off of making the top 30 or even the top 20. For example, let's say that out of nowhere, Fairy Peak unretires and boosts his overall winning percentage by about 5% he instantly shoots up eight places. I did some calculations, and on average, one player is separated from another player, 10 spots above them, by just 4.2 points, and at its minimum, 1.8 points. The point is, these players are a lot closer than their raw placement conveys, and I'd like you to keep that in mind as we go forward. Anyways, let's get to the top 30. In 30th place, we have Card, followed by Extra, marked by eight, AJ, Rawas, Arsenal, Khaled, Razebull, Rettles, and Ahmad in 21st place. If I'm being honest, I think that Mark and AJ could be swapped out for some of the players that I mentioned before, but aside from that, this seems like a decent start to the top 30. On to the top 20, we have Zen in 20th, followed by apparently Jack, Sipical, AJG, TRK, Beast Mode, Radosin, Violet Panda, JNaps, and Justin at number 11. And as soon as it started to look good, it got so much worse than I think anyone was prepared for. The main glaring issue is AJG. I think we could all agree that as good as he is, he is not a top 20 player of all time. Zen at 20th is a hot take, but I could see some people believing it. And both VP and Justin outside the top 10 is definitely not any better of a take than that. But regardless, this is a far cry away from the disaster of Turbo at 20th that happened last time. Overall, not good, but not bad. Moving on, we have Vatira at 10th, Atomic at 9th, Squishy at 8th, Daniel at 7th, and First Killer at 6th. First Killer repeating as number 6 from last time is definitely weird, and I'm not a big fan of Daniel in 7th, but everything else seems almost spot on. Each of these players has earned a place in Rocket League's history books, and each of them is an all-time great in their own right. Starting off our top 5, we have the 4-time himself, Turbo. With this next one in, this is so close for them, they have a control- Oh, Turbo! Oh, the whole team doesn't matter, does it himself, and he's got the lead. I mean, what else is there to say? He's a winner, plain and simple. In my eyes, he is the perfect glue guy. You put him on any roster, and that roster instantly becomes a contender. And he doesn't do that through getting clips or solo carrying. He picks his spots and does the dirty work to get his team over the line. Had he played for as long as some of the others on this list, I have no doubt that he'd be in the top spot. At number four is Vitality's team captain, Alpha54. They've had great chances too. BDS not able to break them down over Alpha to the ceiling. That is utterly monstrous. One of, if not the most underrated players of all time. He rose to prominence in the late pre-open era, hit his stride with vitality in RLCSX, and somehow hasn't skipped a beat. No matter how much the meta has changed, he's always found a way to stay at the top tier of players, and he's always found a way to make sure that his team wins. An absolutely incredible player, and in all honesty, a sleeper pick for the GOAT of the open era. In third place, the leader of the winningest team of the open era, Monkey Moon. And they've got nothing! BDS! One more! Oh! Oh! What is there to say about him that hasn't already been said? Incredible fundamentals, immaculate game sense, a savant on the defensive end, and despite his shaky mental, one of the most dominant forces in Rocket League history. And now at this point, if it isn't already obvious, the two players that have yet to be ranked are Garrett G and Kadop. Ever since I started on this journey eight months ago, I always kinda knew that it would come down to these two, and lo and behold, here they are. Garrett G, the only man to have made it to every single pre-open RLCS LAN. With the drive to stay near the top for longer than anyone else, the mechanics to back up every bit of confidence that he exuded, and the longest professional highlight reel of any player to ever compete. And opposing him, KDOP. Six RLCS Grand Finals in a row, three championships in four seasons, unparalleled consistency, unmatched dominance, the mentality of a battle-hardened warrior, and a resume that most players can only ever dream of having. Two names synonymous with professional Rocket League. 
the faces of their regions, the last of the old guard, the only two players who can claim that they've been at the top for the longest. So, who's really at the top? Captain America or the first French god? NA or EU? Garrett G or Kadoff? Well, here's your answer. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, statistically, the greatest player of all time. By Justin. Now Justin still on the goal line. Bounces back out. Oh! Up! No! Way! Tenths of a point. Three tenths of a point is all that separated these two all time greats. Garrett G had securely held the lead before the competitive result scores were taken into account, but the fact that Kadop had the best overall result score and the greatest peak of any player sealed the deal for him. Although he never was a highlight reel type of player, his skills were undeniably at the top tier all throughout his peak, and his trophy case seems to back that up pretty nicely. Garrett G put up an incredible fight, and he has earned his place on this list. But it's the godfather of French Rocket League who walks away as the rightful king of the court. And it is only him who can now claim to be, statistically, the greatest player of all time. And there's our list! This took me an eternity to complete, and although there are certainly a few things that I could have done better, I could rest easy knowing that this list is infinitely better than the last one. At least in my opinion. And now, I want to hear from you guys. What did you agree with? What could have been done better? And most importantly, did you guys enjoy the video? If so, then make sure to leave a like. If this video gets 5,000 likes before the last major of next season, then I'll make a part 3. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free and you could always change your mind. And with that, I've said all that I need to say. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'm calling it there. See you later!